Hello, welcome to a brand new edition of Get to Know Your City. My name is Milt Van Atta and it's been my pleasure to share a number of conversations with you on this program in election season. We've been talking to the candidates for the city council and the candidates for the mayoral race. And today we're talking with the incumbent in District 1, Lee Tao. Lee was appointed to fill a seat that was a resignation of Chad Wuerl. And he's been there since December serving on behalf of District 1. He's decided to run for that city council place on the ballot April the 5th, Tuesday, April the 5th. And Lee's with us today to talk about uh, his campaign. Lee, welcome to Get to Know Your City. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Lee, just tell us a little bit about yourself so that we can get acquainted sure. with you for, for our viewers who, who may not know you well. Okay. I'm a, a refugee immigrant. Um, we settled in the United States after the Vietnam War. Um, in uh, 1987. We originally settled in, in St. Paul, moved here in 89, and I've been here since then. Um, gone through uh, elementary school, junior high, high school, even went to um, our Mid-State Tech here, mm -hmm. graduated in 2001. And uh, I've been here ever since then, working in the community, trying to serve my community. Wonderful. Uh, tell us about uh, uh, the mayor comes to you, talks about filling out a, a seat on the city council because well, that person had resigned. Uh, talk about your decision to accept that appointment and, <laughs> and really your experiences, what you've learned in these first three months about uh, serving on the city council and representing District 1. Um, when I first heard about it, I was... Um, it was a challenge, and I always liked the challenges. I wanted to, um, you know, looking from the outside in, it was always exciting to get to see all these um, government people doing, you know, uh, making the decisions for the community or the, in, in our fact here, for the city. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I thought, well, now it's the, uh, it's, it's the time, it's a chance that uh, I can um, let myself into this position and and try to change you know the community for the better mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's and my my time serving there since December has been a, a great experience for myself um, and also I hope that you know going forward with the experience that I've had in the last three months that I can I can change um, make a change uh, make make a difference in the community in my district and in the city as a, as a, as a whole. Um, you know, going in, I thought I knew everything, but <laughs> you know, when you got in, when you get in there, some of the decisions that we've had to make, um, you know, sometimes we have to make it according to what the constituents want. Um, and sometimes, you know, we have to make hard decisions as to do we go along with that or do we go with what we feel is gonna, um, benefit the, the community and in, in as, as a whole you know mm -hmm. and uh, some of those are just the kind of challenges that are different from when you're inside looking out and uh, I've, I've had a great experience in making some of the tougher decisions um, I know one of the toughest decisions that we've made was whether to have the city clerk appointed or mm -hmm. have him elected and I, I'm grateful that you know we have kept it at an elected position. So what was the 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 biggest thing that you've learned in, in those three months? What what's the most important way in which it was different than what you expected? Um, dealing with constituents call-ins. Oh. You know I, I didn't um, I didn't expect so many <laughs> but you know it's, it's it's a learning thing and uh, I'm I'm there to help them and I, I, I realize that um, you know that's that's what this position is all about you know is, is helping people who need help within my district and I've had multiple calls from um, different districts just because they know me yeah <laughs> oh, and, yes. and and I think you know that's that's one of the the um, 
newest challenges that I've, I've faced. So now having had this experience over the last three months, how has that shaped how you see the role of an older person? And today, as we sit together and we have this conversation, what would your definition be of the role of an older person? It's more of a go-to leader rather mm. than a, a leader leading. It's a go-to leader. Uh -huh. um, when people have questions or concerns about things that are going on within the community, they would call you and then you would in turn try to help them out to the best of your ability. And if, you know, there are different departments that handle different kind of questions and you're most like, you're mostly pointing them in the right directions, trying to get them their answer, their questions resolved. So let's go in and talk about the city on a broad level, uh, okay. uh, an overview level. As you have now become immersed in city government and serving in city government, uh, where is the city being most effective and productive in, from your observation? Um, from my observation from the last three months, the most productive was, um, I would think, you know, try to bring in the community to get them involved in with the, um, the aquatic center, mm. you know, trying to get the housing, all of that, yeah. um, because we want to be, we want to, every decision we want, we make, we want to make sure that the, the our constituents or the city um, knows about and are aware of our, our progress, yeah. you know. Okay, uh, l let's uh, jump on that and talk about where are you at on the aquatic project, its priority, its status. Uh, give us an update. And right now, we haven't heard anything back yet. Um, I know the mayor's been doing a lot of um, research on that, and we did do um, a survey, mm -hmm. but we haven't gotten any results back yet. Um, um, we were hoping that we would get some sort of results back, but we haven't had anything back yet as far as that. Um, it is a priority um, because, we, as we all know, the mead pool is unusable, mm -hmm. and so we have to put something in place. It's just how are we going to go about and doing that? Okay, so the the, the vision is for something as yes. soon as possible. Yes, is, is an important thing. Okay, well, perhaps the the number one issue in just about every city, Lee, is economic development. Mm -hmm. That's uh, no exception here. It's been at no. the front burner for a lot of years now. Uh, so, what about getting jobs to the community? What about being a, 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 a city where people want to do business, that's business friendly, business supportive? That, that's, that's a big issue. Uh, talk to us about, start with jobs. Okay, with jobs. Um, in the past, we've had great jobs here due to the fact of the, the mill. But with this day and age, you know, um, the mill, it's, it's still up and running. But from the way I see things is uh, we need more job. We need to find a way to bring in these new jobs. You know, and I think one of the better things that we have here are great industrial parks. It's just that we, have, we don't have the, um, the highways that come through to make transportation easier, you know, and, and that's something that we should look at and, and um, look at developing, you know, um, a bypass, a 54, or something to that sort, where traffic can come in and out of the, of the city. Um, hopefully that would attract more business to our industrial parks. Okay, uh, is there anything more, and, and maybe you don't feel we need to, but, but I guess maybe that's the, the part that I, I'm focusing on. Are there ways in which our city needs to be more business friendly, more business supportive? Do we have a good environment to do business in here? We do, but um, I think, you know, and, and I probably won't be able to answer that question because I haven't been on the board for that long. I don't know how everything's mm -hmm. working yet, but, sure. you know, um, from my past experiences, other companies have, that approach us, for instance, that, that meat factory that was going to come in, mm. we shot it down. Um, 
but with me being on board, I, I'm hoping that we would be able to um, make a better decision and, and invite those kind of jobs here. Uh, we can't rely just on the mill. You know, we, we need different kind of um, manufacturing jobs to come into Rapids. Um, that way we can keep our, our younger families here, um, build up our, our population again. You know, we've lost, I would say, a good number of people mm -hmm. throughout the years. Yeah. Although we've, I've seen from my grade, you know, from my graduating classes, I've seen a couple of them come back. Yeah. But, you know, we would like to have more of those families come back. There, there, there is something of a demographic mm -hmm. gap in our community, isn't there? We're, we're skewing. It's, it feels like just from observation that we're skewing older and, and older. Yeah. We're, we're an mm -hmm. aging community in yes. many ways. Yes, we need, we need the younger people to come in to um, be on the council, mm -hmm. have fresh ideas, you know, and move this this city further. You know, move it. Um, to keep to keep our city viable, you know, and and downtown project project is is a good project. It's yes, it does cost a lot of money, but you know the attraction uh, making Wisconsin Rapids an attractive place to live. Mm. You know, it everything comes at a cost. <laughs> yes, it sure does. We're going to talk more about the downtown, okay. Lee, but I just want to share with you and with our viewers. I'm encouraged. I've interviewed four candidates for city council. Mm -hmm. You are the fourth. Three of them are, are young people. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you talked about getting young people involved in the, the governance of, of the community. It's happening in, yeah, in this election. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's talk downtown. Okay. Let's talk about vision for downtown because everyone seems to agree that that we have to take full advantage of the river, mm -hmm. that that's one of our greatest assets and we just need to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. What's your vision for downtown, Lee? Um, with the Encourage Building being where it's at, all the things that are going in the Encourage Building, the, the mm. Tribune Center. Okay. Um, and then with the, the Riverfront Project, I think that those two will attract a lot of the young people to stay here. Um, of course, we would we would require housing development within that that area because no, youth or younger generations nowadays they don't want to travel far for shopping, you know, to get coffee and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it would be ideal to to get that riverfront project done, um, even though it it costs a lot. A lot of people are against it, but we have to look at the future of Wisconsin Rapids. You know, and, and if we don't develop something to, to attract people to, to stay here, you know, um, how, are we gonna, how are we gonna stay viable in this day and age? Mm. Then, then, then you support the development as, it, as the vision currently is being forwarded by our mayor and by, by others that yes. you're behind that plan as opposed to any modifications? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Lee, there's been a lot, a lot of headlines, a lot of talk about what happened in Flint, Michigan mm -hmm. and the water crisis mm -hmm. there. Uh, talk about being a, a steward, as an older person, about being a steward of, of infrastructure in our city. Where are we at? Are we in good standing with our infrastructure? Or are we on top of that so we don't have any crises? We're currently, and I, I, I'm, I don't have enough information to, okay. to really answer that question, but from my point of view and my experiences being on the city council, we're on top of things right now. Um, yes, we do have, we might have outdated systems, but they are currently being reviewed and, and looked at. And as, as an older person, would that be one of your priorities, is to make sure that the city is on top of yes. all those infrastructure issues? Yes, yes it is. Um, the safety of our, our communities, the safety of our, our people is, is a big priority um, for me, you know, to, that's why I'm, I'm running is I want to make sure that, you know, our, our city is growing, but yet at the same time our um, our people, the people of Wisconsin Rapids, are 
being taken care of and and you know not having the the water issues for example you know that that other city that Flint Michigan is having um, because I I have my family here and I sure don't want mm -hmm. you know my family to to be in that situation let's talk about uh, let's talk about communication and in working with the mayor's office working with other council members working with department heads how, how do you stay in communication and, and connect all those different things and make them work <laughs> um, we we stay in communication mostly by email or um, telephone calls um, for me it, it just works better that way because of my my job my current job too and so emailing back and forth um, to stay connected um, to get the most current information um, but I also like to, to call them directly because sometimes, you know, in an email you can't express you know, <laughs> some things. And I, I just think that, you know, those are, those are the, the main two that I use to stay current. I get the sense in, in talking with you today that you've really enjoyed these last three months and you've really gotten engaged in this role mm -hmm. of being on the city council and it's been invigorating for you yes <laughs> it's it's really been a, been a um, eye, eye opener for me you know um, being on the council learning all the different departments um, getting to know all the different departments and what they what they do and oversee um, and uh, you know our decision as a council affects affects what they do and I, I think you know that that's very exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk biggest picture of all. Let's talk long-term vision mm -hmm. because what all of us are doing right now is having a deep impact on the next generation and the generation after them. The, the choices that we're making as a community now mm -hmm. impact us 20 and 40 years down the line. What's your grand vision for this community. You talked to us at the start of the program about how this is your community. Mm -hmm. It's home. It's your community. What's your big vision, Lee, for 20, 30, 40 years from now? What kind of things you want to do now to change that future? I want to develop the, um, you know, uh, a system where we will be able to have um, manufacturing jobs come in, more jobs, um, better education system. Um, you know, looking at right now we have Mid State, and mm -hmm. but we have a Spirus um, River Hill, a River View uh, yeah. Hospital, and those are great um, assets to to our community right now. Plus the the paper mill, of course. Um, but we need more of those jobs to 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 keep to keep our younger generations here. We want to we want them to stay in the community, raise their family and in turn make a difference in the community as as we all, you know, get older. We I, my vision for the community for Wisconsin Rapids is to bring in more jobs to keep our um, to get our population up to to hold our our youth here at home so that you know we don't we don't lose them after they go off to college you know how do we how do we bring them back into the community and that's what we're here to 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 do is how do we do that and i think you know with with me being on there in the next um for the next year or or years after that um i wish that we would work on some sort of plan as to how do we keep our youth within our you know to, to stay in wisconsin rapids and and um, improve on 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 the the way we live here you know because I want to live here forever but <laughs> you know um, so that's gonna be a big job it is it's gonna take a lot of work mm -hmm. a lot of communication a lot of collaboration isn't mm -hmm. it yes yeah. and we're gonna need the help of everybody you know not just the city council members mm -hmm. So what, what then, um, what do you think are the, are the first two, one or two steps that we could take uh, as a community in the next two years? Because 
we're, we're going to have a mayor elected, we're going to have a city council elected, and that will be the stewardship team for the next two years. Right. What one or two things can you, as a part of that group, do in this first two years to move us towards that big vision? I think, you know, we'd have to look at the, the um, transportation as far as the 54 bypass. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest things going in was I wanted to see what we can do to have that in place so that way other companies would look at us and say, you know, okay, we can, we'll have easier transportation for our business if we were to go into, into Wisconsin mm -hmm. Rapids. I think, you know, that's one of the main major things that I, I look forward to working on, plus the Riverfront Project, mm -hmm. to keep our youth using that river frontage that we have. You know, it's, it's a beautiful view. It's just not being utilized to the, to the potential that it, it can be. Mm. Uh, Lee, let's move down to the district level now for the okay. final segment of, of our program. Uh, let's talk District 1. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the biggest issue in that district, in District 1, that you face right now? Um, most of the calls that I've had right now are pertaining to, you know, when a renter moves out and there's a lot of garbages. Uh -huh. um, it's more of a cleanup um, thing that, mm -hmm. that really affects uh, District 1. And, you know, go, gotten on board, I wish that, you know, with more time, I would be able to come up with something, kind of what Chad World did mm -hmm. with the uh, neighborhood cleanup. And I wish, you know, with more time, in the summer months, that that would be an opportunity for us to look at again. So, uh, community beautification. Yes, it might be the number one topic in your in our uh, district. Okay, yes. uh, let me ask you what is. Uh, I, I realize that this is kind of a, a difficult question, but I, I sit and I look at your position and I wonder. So I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, l let's say you face an issue, Lee, where the what what the best interests are in 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 district one mm -hmm. are in conflict with the best interests of the city how are you going to resolve that if there oh. that tension ever pops up and if, again i realize how difficult <laughs> that that question is if um i don't i don't know i would say we would have to go with what the district felt was 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 better okay than what the you know what the other committees would would want, and I would I would be for what my my district wants. You know, even though I might not believe in it, but I might not see what they're seeing. So you know, if if we would just talk and, and work things out, I think I would go with whatever my district would would feel that it would be better or ben more beneficial to the city than versus what the city wants. Okay, so is is there anything that's right there that you do want to bring before the city that would be uh, an advance for your district? Is there anything you want your your city to do that would be a project in, in District One and make that happen? Um, as of right now, I don't have anything. But okay. you know, if if anybody in the district does want something. I would feel free to give me a call, and and I would I would be more than willing to work with them on that. I know we do have the industrial park in my district, mm. um, and I wish that we would have more more jobs in that district to to support our, our you know would it would make a difference in District One, but um, as of right now I I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, so you, you've talked on, on a number of occasions about uh, your constituents calling mm -hmm. you. Uh, is that the primary way that, that, that uh, you'll make yourself available to them? How do you want to stay in touch with your constituents? And, um, and, and I know that they, they come to you sometimes, Lee, <laughs> yeah. but also how are you going to go to them, I mm -hmm. guess, is really the gist of my question also. It's easier if they call me or if I can call them back because of my work schedule. Mm. It just makes, it just works out better. But of course they can email me um, or they can text me, mm. leave me a message and I would be 
you know, more than willing to give them a call back. I usually respond in a, in a timely manner. That way they don't feel that, oh, I, I'm, I'm being forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, give me an evaluation. It mm -hmm. is, is our city healthy right now? It is. It mm -hmm. is. Um, as far as, um, you know, job-wise and all of that, we are pretty, pretty healthy. Um, but we could use more. Mm. To 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 make Wisconsin Rapids more viable, you know, we would I would love to see um, even um, just with uh, entrepreneurs, mm. you know, and uh, uh, small businesses. It doesn't have to be big factories, you know, right. to come into Wisconsin Rapids or even for our our um, people here to start start up a business. You know, I think there's a lot of um, opportunities out there. Could we do more for entrepreneurs? Um, yes, we definitely can. I know they, we do have a lot of um, grants um, from Encourage that would mm -hmm. help out in that way, yes. Okay, uh, final question. Okay. Um, imagine that I am uh, representing, sitting across from the table from you, representing all of the people uh, in District 1, mm -hmm. going out April 5th to vote, making a decision. Tell me why uh, I should vote for Lee Tao. I'm there 24-7. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here to listen to the voice of my constituents, um, you know, and, and I will do everything to the best of my ability to get your point across, get your questions answered, um, and, and, and I will make the best decision based on you know, um, my constituents' um, uh, ideas to, to improve the city um, and also to um, make, I want, I want their input, I want my constituents' input to um, make decisions at, at the, the council meetings so that it is in their favor because that's who I'm representing. Lee, thank you for visiting with me today. I appreciate that. Thank you. Our conversation today has been with Lee Tao, who is the city council older person in District 1, running for election on Tuesday, April the 5th. The other side of the ballot will be Joseph Zerflu, and we've interviewed him as well. And you can find that program on demand or check your listings here on River Cities Community Access Media. We thank you for joining us. This program is called Get to Know Your City, and make sure that you're on the outlook for uh, our other conversations with the four people who are running for city council and the two mayoral candidates. We're keeping you informed right here on Get to Know Your City on River Cities Community Access Media.